<laughs> yeah, and uh, another thing is that uh, this event is for everybody to speak and to discuss and to have live conversation. So uh, whenever you want to talk, um, just uh, write in the chat or raise this hand you have uh, near reactions like this. Oh, switch on your microphone, really. Or, or just exactly or just uh, unmute yourself and start talking because we are not that huge group that needs uh, a lot of ceremonies to start talking uh, but uh, yeah another thing is that the time is important we are short in time so uh, if you start talking uh, finish at some point so, <laughs> so everyone else has also a chance to talk Zlata you can go ahead mm -hmm. Uh, whom this event is for. It's for everyone, but especially for those who are interested in learning and development, who uh, create trainings, who design e-learning, who are interested in scenario-based learning, and for everyone who likes this area. And uh, what do we want to get out of this? Um, Sometimes we discuss some challenges and some uh, events and try to find solutions. And of course, uh, even though we are all great minds here, sometimes we cannot find solutions to every challenge, but uh, it's very important that we exchange ideas, that we inspire each other, that we have some networking and fun, of course. And um, now we would like to introduce ourselves. I'm not alone on this stage. I have Zlata with me. And uh, we decided to build our introduction using a little bit of uh, scenario. So here is a, a, a course and it has two possible options. Uh, do you want to know more about us? No. And then oh, oh, I'm sad. Goodbye. But uh, let's start over. Yes. And now it's me. So who am I? I am Olga. I am the CEO and co-founder of Workademy. At Workademy, we build learning management system for growing companies. And my background is in software engineering, and I'm super passionate about learning and development and e-learning. And uh, hi again, I'm Zlata. I used to work as uh, the head of L&D department at Rocket Delivery International Company and was also part of the Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine. And uh, I'm passionate about L&D and all things edutainment and I love the topic of scenario-based learning. And who are you? Uh, and here we, uh, I will paste the link. We created a mirror board where you can uh, introduce yourselves using the um, this. Uh, yeah, Zlata, maybe you can share. Yeah. So here is our working space that Olga has kindly organized for us. And uh, here in the uh, top part, uh, you can see there are these slots for every one of the participants, and we actually have provided some example. So uh, what we'd like to know about you is uh, your name and role, uh, where are you based, uh, have you actually used uh, scenario-based learning as a tool, and um, uh, the last one, uh, what's your favorite case for scenario-based learning, and then, uh, well, let's probably take one one minute to complete this and then we'll ask you to uh, present this information about yourself. And maybe now I will put some music. <laughs> I have been at several events like this as a participant and every time there is an activity like this and uh, participants need a minute to complete it, uh, Olga gets a bit frustrated with the silence. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I try to ensure her that everything's fine and things are just going the way they're supposed to be going. Yeah. Uh, have you guys found the board all right? Is everything working out for you? I actually can't see the, 
the notes. I have a. I have. A... Uh, yeah, I don't see the the board mm -hmm. like this. Well, okay. So I'm not sure if I'm in the wrong place or something, but I'm not getting up these options. Um, I um, see in the chat there is the link. If you follow it, then you might see the like gray space. And if you click on um, uh, here in the upper uh, right corner, you can see the names. And if you click on mine, you will uh, get transferred to the part of the board where I am at. And I'm currently in the space where we're supposed to be. But um, you have to be signed up at Miro, right? To ah, uh, let me let me try another link. Can you? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 look at the link that I sent. I think that uh, this one will work better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I can see more people. Um, I'm there, but I cannot edit this thing. Like I'm trying to type it, but it didn't. Uh, if you, Jessica, if you click on any of the cards. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm typing like the first letter and then it disappears. But I had to log in with Miro. I, I do have a Miro account, so it wasn't a problem for me, but um, I had to log in to be able to edit something. I don't know if anybody has a Miro account. All right, I need editor rights to change anything. Uh, uh, Masha, can you try the second link that I sent? Because I think that the first link uh, is... Um... Not okay. It's actually really good that we do it now and discover all the uh, possible challenges with it because uh, then when we actually start uh, uh, working uh, then we have everything solved. Hopefully. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's take another half a minute to complete this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Olga, do you want us to start? We actually have talked about the first two, right? So we can uh, for ourselves talk about the second two questions. Um, I mean, the usage of scenario-based learning and the favorite one. Yeah. Do you want to... Um... Yeah, do you want me to start or do you want to go first? Uh, ah, um, I want you to go first. Okay. Yeah, so um, if any of you have joined a bit later, I'm Zlata, and I'm a senior LND consultant. I'm calling in from Kiev. Uh, that's where I'm based. I'm from, from Ukraine. And actually, I have used scenario-based learning in my practice, and my favorite case is probably using it for Nonviolent communication training or NBC, if you've heard of it. 
And how did you use it? Ah, I will tell you a little bit uh, <laughs> later. <laughs> okay. It's actually one of the cases that I will share today. Uh-huh. Okay. So as for me, I am Olga and uh, I am originally from Ukraine, but uh, currently I'm in uh, Portugal. Uh, but usually I'm based in Berlin, super confu confusing, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I used scenario-based learning. I helped to set up a training for customer training. So yeah, it worked uh, really nice mm -hmm. in that case. Jessica, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm Jessica. I'm also located in Berlin. And I'm working as a trainer and instructional designer um, for a company uh, in the medical field. So that's why my case is doctors talking to patients. <laughs> um, but I'm really just about to start uh, working on in both in the medical field and uh, with the scenario based learning. I have done some scenario based learning to like um, a little bit to give information but not so much to really do scenarios so what happens if I choose this answer and what is the other route if I choose another answer so I'm really I was really happy when I saw your post and I thought this could be a great introduction to start working with scenario based learnings thank you very much for the invitation nice thank you for joining that's so good to, to have you here Maria Um, yeah, hi everyone. I'm Maria. I'm from Ukraine, but I'm living in Salzburg, Austria, and um, I'm like a very much beginner in l and I'm looking for a job in it now, so that's why I would really like to know more about neuro-based learning because I haven't had like a lot of experience with it. So I cannot think of a case where like I really participated in that. Um, I saw like how Olga does it uh, in her academy courses, but I'm not sure like um, that I participated as a learner in that. Mm -hmm. So I would really like to know more. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Uh -huh. um, I think next one is Ben. Uh, yeah, hello from me. Um, yeah, I'm Ben or Benjamin um, from uh, Chemedia, which is a company as a e-learning provider. We offer both e-learning tools or software as well as uh, agency work. And we actually have a tool for scenario-based learning. And I actually do uh, both a bit of product um, design and um, consulting and agency work <laughs> with that tool. So that's my um, experience with uh, scenario-based learning. We are based in Chemnitz, which is in the eastern part of Germany. And um, one of our well, my favorite applications and something I've been working uh, on a lot is actually somewhat similar to what uh, Jessica uh, described, which is uh, medical training, mm -hmm. um, both for medical sales training, objection handling, and things like that, as well as, um, again, doctors talking to patients. Um, we've recently had a university start using our tool, for example, for actual uh, medical training where they practice difficult conversations with their patients. For example, when it's about uh, changing your lifestyle due to a uh, disease, for example, if you're, if you're a diabetic, for example, that you have to white sugar and things like that. Um, so that was a really, really cool project where scenario-based learning really uh, tended to shine because it showed the strong reactions uh, that, that mistakes can cause and um, that you really have to make good decisions and, and notice, okay, that's, this is not working well, this is working well, you can write feedback and things like that. And same goes for objection handling, of course, where you have to ask the correct questions to someone who is raising concerns, like what what, are, what, are your, what were the indications, what, what kind of medication, what kind of um, dosage do you use, things like that. So um, yeah, that's... One of the applications that I really liked so far. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. These are such amazing examples. Uh, so I I see that Liv is probably the next one. I'll I'll do my best with the voice I have. <laughs> uh, my name is Liv. I live in Norway. Uh, I'm currently. Um, working as a coordinator in a, in a school. And I'm also uh, the founder of a company for teaching adult, uh, Norwegian to adults and uh, 
creating the content for that and making sure the progression is pedagogically sound and, and all that. It's really, really fun. So in those two jobs, I do use um, scenario-based learning uh, because I think it's really good to kind of see, uh, like you said, that how, like the reactions and how you would feel in that certain situation and kind of brings up the strengths and the weaknesses very clearly. And I, I think it's a good way to kind of practice uh, skills and knowledge. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you. So, um, and uh, I see also Elizabeth, your card. Uh, yes, uh, I'm Elizabeth. I work for IceCat, um, and we are a yeah, content provider for e-commerce. And so um, I've just started in this role like last September. I'm actually joining because I'm looking at the workable. <laughs> um, uh, so I thought it would be good to also join this, this seminar. So scenario-based learning is not really a term that I'm familiar with. Um, of course, it's a little bit in the name, I guess. And I think maybe it's relatable to what we do also a little bit around our sales training mm -hmm. uh, with role-playing and, you know, that type of things. So I think it could be interesting for that um, mm -hmm. handling objections or um, um, yeah, what you what do you say when uh, um, yeah in different scenarios there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that very much resonates with me. I do love using SBL for role plays as well. That's probably one of my most favorite applications. So uh, it looks like we have uh, we're very nicely spread out across uh, Europe. And uh, it's great that we have a very mixed group in terms of like some of you are quite experienced in using SBL and some of you are only beginning. And that is, um, I would very much like for us to have kind of a discussion with the experienced people contributing and uh, those who are only starting contributing as well, but maybe more in the form of questions if you have any, so feel free to do that. And um, uh, let me go back to our presentation. Olga, I think this one is for you to talk yeah. about, right? This is uh, for me to ask you to follow our LinkedIn page and uh, uh, like it <laughs> so on our linkedin page we have news on these particular events so if you like them you will get updated on them and of course on some other lnd facts and um, at tech news yeah you can proceed Zlata. yeah all right so um scenario based learning and there we are i am sitting thinking about um behind my computer thinking about what is the best way to talk about scenario-based learning. And uh, I actually didn't want to start with, you know, like a textbook uh, definition of what it is. And uh, I also think that um, the name is kind of self-explanatory, uh, but there are things that I would want to highlight here as to like, how do I know if it's SBL or not? And that is presenting a problem through a scenario. And um, uh, so a scenario being a story, uh, then it's important for the uh, learner to really have choices. So two or more in our first um, demonstration, there were two choices where you could uh, choose to learn a little bit about us or you could choose to ignore that part. Um, and then the other aspect is that we really allow the learner to solve the problem by themselves. Uh, so instead of just giving them the straightforward answer, okay, you do this ABC, uh, if you remember uh, from your own experience, the things that we actually experimented with, we didn't, first we didn't know what it was, but then we tried to tackle the problem from various sides. Maybe we failed at the first attempt, maybe the second was a bit more successful, but not completely. And once we get there, and if we really had to mine this knowledge by ourselves, uh, it really becomes integrated and really ours. So that is what scenario-based learning, and I think it's an important aspect of it to, uh, you know, like to really focus on. Uh, 
uh, in the introduction, you were talking about the um, applications of scenario-based learning, and I felt like those were the applications where you used scenario-based learning as instructional designers or as coaches and L&D experts. But have you ever been a learner within a scenario-based learning? And that is my question to you. And anybody, feel free to unmute, jump in. Well, I, have, I have a little example to share. Um, it, it's not actually a digital uh, scenario-based learning, but it was actually a children's book, uh, like maybe 15 years ago or something. It was one of those choose-your-own-adventure books where you uh, had to make a decision and it, and it told you, okay, go to page uh, 23 to, to move on. But it wasn't just a, a story for, for, for fun, but it was actually an educational story because it was a science expedition and you had to make decisions on like what, what kind of samples to take and what tools to use and things like that. It was, it was really fun, it was really cool, it was actually a learning experience, but it was all analog back in the day, of course. <laughs> Yeah, this is actually a great point that scenario-based learning doesn't really only have to be within yeah. e-learning or online. That's true. So, uh, Benjamin, how was it for you? From the way you were talking about it, I kind of felt that it was really exciting for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, especially as a, especially as a child, of course, but but even overall, it was um, an opportunity to not just interact with the plain facts like learning about science for example it was okay that was fun for me too back in the day of, of course but um, i was actually able to apply the knowledge and then mm -hmm. put it into a certain context uh, live a story around it and that's also one of the applications of course for quote-unquote modern sbl where it's not just about okay do this do that and this is important and this is your to-do list for today but you actually experience it in, in a more practical way and in a more realistic way of course so it was, it was really nice because it gave me more of a more more context basically around the, the plain information mm -hmm. yeah thank you very much you also for providing the analytical side of this experience uh do we have anybody else who'd like to share how it was for them to be a learner within an sbl I can share, uh, if I may. So uh, when COVID started, we uh, decided to, that um, we decided to help people to deal with anxiety. And uh, we set up a course on Workademy, which was heavily based on scenario-based learning. We worked with a psychologist and therapist, and uh, it's um, pretty much composed of scenarios. Like, for example, when you feel... Um, your anxiety level uh, going up, uh, what are you going to do? I'll watch Netflix, uh, going for a walk, and uh, uh, depending on what you choose, uh, then the therapist explains how it affects your uh, system, and it's pretty good. And uh, it's funny because I helped to set it up, but then I was also a learner, and it actually helped me to uh, create uh, some techniques to deal with um, uh, my uh, I don't know, my anxiety levels. So yeah, very interesting. And yeah, like Ben said, uh, uh, it helps to really start applying these uh, things because you feel how different scenarios evolve. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for sharing. Uh, and uh, besides these three aspects that I have chosen to put here on the slides, which are obviously not exhaustive in terms of a scenario-based learning, uh, what other characteristics have you noticed being a learner like i heard you guys mention the swift practical application of the things you learn anything else i think for me uh, to have some kind of preparedness in the in the real situation <clears throat> to have like the situation is somewhat familiar when you're actually in the real one and i think that's really valuable yeah I couldn't agree more. Um, this uh, is actually very relevant what Benjamin mentioned, like the children's book. Uh, I think it's been uh, 
very widely discussed that uh, people like stories and enjoy stories and that we really feel connected to the stories. And this has been talked about within marketing and all kinds of industries. But the other aspect that I just wanted to highlight today is that we actually learn very well through stories. And the stories as a learning tool has been around for a very long time. And if you think of actually folk stories and fairy tales, mm -hmm. which are the tool to pass on the uh, knowledge from generation to generation, they are in the form of stories because this is kind of evolutionary. This is the tool that stayed with us because we learn really well through it. So this is just something that I wanted to highlight for you. And uh, uh, surely scenario-based learning has various advantages, um, but I didn't want to have, you know, just like a, a list of 25 bullet points of all the good things uh, that SBL gives us, uh, just several of them. Um, and I think that is just, um, you know, my, the combination of my background um, forced me to choose these uh, four. So the first one is uh, facilitating problem solving in learners. And this is what I hear a lot from my clients in consulting is that uh, very often uh, companies would like to teach their uh, team members, their managers, their leaders to uh, these problem solving skills. And that's no, what, not always easy to do. Uh, for kids or for adults. And that is something that uh, scenario-based learning provides. And the other aspect that is connected to this is that not only, so it's not like you just throw the person into the water uh, for them to quickly learn to swim, but uh, when you're building a scenario, you're actually providing the guided exploration of the problem for the learners. And that creates actually a safer uh, practice zone uh, combined with this element of, um, you know, like psychological aspect of this, we perceive scenarios and stories and games as kind of artificial or not real things. So for us, we feel more comfortable practicing and uh, actually for, I come from a Slavic culture where uh, mistakes are not very much encouraged and everything you do at school is highlighted. Every single mistake is highlighted with a uh, red pen and no correct thing is cor uh, marked with a red one. So that translates into adults that are very constrained in terms of uh, trying things out and so on and so forth. So we don't really have that mindset where to get good at something, you actually first to be kind of bad at it. Uh, and scenario-based learning actually can address that even for like uh, really um, difficult cases of, uh, um, you know, people not being ready to try things out and experiment. And this is what I like scenario-based learning for is that it actually, you know, eases that strain uh, and that fear of making a mistake. And the feedback is something that you can use to adjust and to keep exploring things. Um, but even though scenario-based learning is a cool tool, I don't want to kind of communicate the idea that this is one universal greatest best tool ever that should be applied to everything. Absolutely not. This is one of the tools that is relevant for particular situations, for tackling particular problems. And, um, so here, I also thought that we could have uh, an element of scenario-based learning to uh, for this next section where we actually talk about the problems that could be addressed with the scenario-based learning. But before we delve into that, I would like to hear your thoughts on this. Um, even if you have never tried using scenario-based learning as a tool, what are your thoughts? What kind of problems could be addressed using scenario-based learning as a tool? I think uh, basically anything that uh, has to do with communication and talking to each other, I think that's a very good um, yeah, a bunch of cases that you can address with SBL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Thank you. Yeah, I would argue that it's not just <clears throat> um, communication, but overall, most things related to quote unquote soft skills. 
-hmm. because uh, situations tend to be more ambiguous when it's about soft skills and communication and things like that, rather than uh, harder skills like a, a process for for constructing something or or programming something. For example, there's there, these, these processes are probably as difficult or more difficult, but they are clear. The paths are much more clear and there's less branching really. So anything that is soft skills related, even like um, leadership, for example, can be very ambiguous. And I think it's really great for SPR. Yeah, this is a very great point. Um, so let me demonstrate uh, something for you. So uh, here we start with a triggering event. Basically, this is the beginning of the story, the setup. Hey, learners, so far you've covered the topics of what SBL is and its benefits. As a result of our training, we'd like our learners to be able to solve specific problems. Learning begins once learners are confronted with a problem. Uh, you may have already heard that there are ill-defined and that there are well-defined problems, or sometimes they're called ill-structured and well-structured problems. Um, and what do you want to learn more about next? And here's our branching. And branching is one of the major tools for uh, scenario-based learning. Basically, this is where our scenario diverges and you have an option of actually learning a bit about ill-defined problems or well-defined problems. So uh, we'll start with the ill-defined problems or ill-structure. So an ill-defined problem doesn't produce a particular certain answer. Uh, Ill-structured problems, they mirror the real world problems and they're very similar to it. And uh, the peculiarities of this is that data may be conflicting or there is no uh, consensus or no single right way of uh, doing things and uh, the parts or values may be in conflict. This may sound a bit unclear, and basically um, ill-defined problems are the problems where there is uh, there are different solutions to the problem, and there is just uh, various ways of how you can handle it. So some of the examples could be um, arriving at a diagnosis or building a sales department or developing a training program, assessing learning outcomes. These are all examples of uh, ill-defined problems. And um, uh, here to kind of process it, here we've got a question. What would be an appropriate answer to address an ill-defined problem? And here we have several options. So a claim or a justification, a judgment, or a single right answer. Guys, that is a question to you. What do you think? If we have an ill-structured problem, what would be a appropriate response to it? I, I don't really like any of the responses, <laughs> so I would, but I would, I think the first one is the best, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. How, if you don't like the formulation of this particular one, how would you formulate it? Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess I think in the, uh, in this, uh, what would be an appropriate answer to address an ill-defined problem? I think I would, I would start with questions. You know, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, here we have a brief demonstration of what happens if a person chooses the wrong answer. Okay. The right answer. The judgment actually is also the right answer because uh, in the situations where there is no one right way to do things, that depends very much on the context sometimes. So, uh, okay. Uh, Ill defined problems a bit. Uh, discovered and time to talk about well-defined problems yeah i see a hand yes maria um like what what does it mean like a claim or justification so like um wouldn't you want to provide like a range of answers and like discuss them with people to solve an ill-defined problem or how does it yeah work? yeah yeah so uh what it means is that um basically this is as opposed to just 
you saying that, okay, there is one definite right answer, uh, like a number or a string of uh, steps to do it, uh, but rather this is a more kind of blurry uh, thing. So uh, the answer to this, to address it, could be a person's judgment. So they are making a choice of what would be the best way to act here. Um, and here, the justifications or a claim, they are all kind of synonymous in this context. I'm still not sure I understand what, like, so what's a claim or a justification of mm -hmm. what? Yeah, so for instance, uh, your fate, you are uh, in a soft skill training. So for instance, uh, providing uh, feedback, uh, providing training. And um, so to, um, this is an ill-defined problem because, uh, again, there are various ways to do it well and to do it right. Uh, even if the company has a tone of voice or a policy, uh, there are still a range of options that you can go with. Uh, and so if you're put in a situation, in a scenario where you have to react to a certain case, right, um, you will be making a judgment of how you want to act there. And, uh, or, and you can justify, okay, so I will choose to talk to this person by myself because I believe blah, 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 blah. So that judgment or that justification depends on other factors that you're considering within that context, right? So we, can, we cannot say that there's just one definite answer to address that situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So moving on to well-defined problems. A well-defined problem produces a right answer through an appropriate algorithm of action. So the classical case of a well-defined problem is a mathematical task or an equation. Um, it could be following a certain flow in a CRM system uh, or specific order of actions uh, in case of emergency. So these are uh, well-defined problems. And again, uh, the question to uh, just bring your focus to it, what would be an appropriate answer to address a well-defined problem? <laughs> yeah, Olga, I see, I see you mm, showing the second variant. That's right. So, because to a mathematical equation, basically, uh, the right answer is just a number. And guys, here is um, uh, the place for, uh, again, uh, your answers. What, what would be an example of an ill-defined problem from your work that you think could be addressed with scenario-based learning? I know you've shared some things in the beginning, but maybe... Uh, some people who haven't shared, or maybe you can come up with other cases that um, you think could fit here. Just for me to clarify, uh, is the question clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, no, I, I'm just coming with a suggestion just for, for the sake of it. Uh, for instance, uh, how to handle a, a conflict between two children. <laughs> Definitely. No single right answer, unfortunately. <laughs> no, exactly. Most parents would want this to be a well-defined problem. <laughs> Thank uh, you. I think in my case, it could be, uh, for example, discovery calls with potential clients when we try to discover the uh, challenges and uh, how we can solve them with the learning management system. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also think, Olga, in regards to the LMS, the onboarding and uh, teaching the users to use the platform also oh, could yeah. be well uh, ill-defined problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, and guys, just uh, one more question. Um, mm -hmm, just to move it a little bit. One more question for us to be teaching the SBL. Is it? Ah, I kind of <laughs> yeah revealed the answer, right? So uh, 
Yeah, the question would be to teach scenario-based learning, whether it's a well-defined or an ill-defined problem. Uh, but I'm sure all of you would have answered uh, correctly. So that is an uh, uh, ill-defined problem, actually. All right, let us uh, move on. So here I just wanted to reiterate and to talk a bit more about scenario-based learning application uh, for some particular cases. Um, so mandatory compliance training. Uh, nothing sounds super exciting about mandatory compliance training. So scenario-based learning could be a useful tool here in order to really spice things up and make it more engaging and I I wouldn't say exciting, but tolerable for the learner. I have a colleague uh, from HIAD who's using um, scenario-based learning to uh, teach policies to the newcomers into their staff. And some of their policies are so lengthy, they're like a hundred pages long. And it's just to read it is uh, very time and resource consuming. So uh, they have decided to apply SBL to make it uh, more user-friendly and ensure that people actually uh, get Get in contact with those policies. So um, as uh, Benjamin and some of you also mentioned soft skill training. Um, yeah, a lot of about soft skills training is uh, very ill-defined because that very much depends on other people and other factors. So from my experience, we had this really popular series of workshops on feedbacks that were centered around nonviolent communication training. And um, I am, it was also mentioned the role plays today. So uh, the way I use scenario based learning there is that um, the roles were given out to the participants and they were given a story in the form of a conflict that a kind of a triggering event and they would have to act out uh, this conflict based on like using this uh, new nonviolent communication skills that they have acquired and then the story would get uh, new plot twists and new like situations would be uh, fed uh, to the learners so they would have to again uh, produce other reactions and um, solve this conflict this situation in a certain way uh, then all kinds of critical things thinking skills training um, so uh, like if we take the example of cases then cases could be presented as just a story like okay so this is what happened and we did that and then this happened uh, which is uh, great and I personally love uh, learning about different cases however that could be actually uh, turned into a bit of a scenario where you kind of uh, cut this uh, case into story bits and then uh, present to the learner just the first part and then encourage them to produce and explore various options. So what would you do if say this happened or um, uh, using um, promoting questions, uh, you could encourage people to say critically analyze, okay, what could be the options to react in this case? Or what are the risks that we could um, foresee here? And then uh, share what you really did and what the result was. And then that brings us to the next step of the scenario where, okay, so then this happened. And so how would you act in this case? Um, and uh, also high risk uh, tasks and trainings like tactical medicine or firefighters training where it's really dangerous to place learners in the real world situations. So for that, um, SBL is also widely applied. Um, and the last bullet uh, has questions, and this is the place where maybe you want to share other um, scenario-based learning applications that you haven't mentioned so far. I actually have another example for a high-risk task training just um, um, to emphasize that. For example, we have a scenario-based uh, training um, around first aid in a really dangerous situation. And um, basically every single step, if you make a bad choice, the scenario ends. This is to emphasize these, the severity of the situation. I mean, for example, in a basic sales training or something, you might just get a chance to redo something or just anger your customer, for example. But in this first aid situation, if the first thing you do is not call an ambulance 
you've already lost basically for example and then we do a first date for example things like that so this can be really nice to again provide context and um, another thing you you talked about uh, regarding blind screening for example make it more interesting overall for learners because the scenario tends to be fun but also to provide more context or also answer the question what's in it for me why should i learn this because you can use a scenario to show the effects uh, when you don't know these things and you don't apply them properly for example, we had a, a social engineering training. Uh, social engineering is uh, basically quote unquote hackers who don't hack your computer, but hack your brain. They make a fake phone call, for example, and uh, pretend to be someone else to grab information or get some kind of access. And uh, this overall, this was a large course, but it started with a scenario where learners didn't really know what to do. And then it showed them the, the consequences that might result in something that when they don't know what to do. And then mm -hmm. the learning part followed and then another scenario. So it can provide more context and more severity to these things that might just be quite easy to understand at first. You think you understand them, but you can't really apply them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for highlighting that. All right, let's then move on. So um, in both our demonstrations today, um, there were there was this tool of branching used and branching is one of the major tools for scenario based learning. So basically where your story diverges into two, three or more options, but with more options, that's a bit challenging because um, branchings, uh, if there's a lot of them or if there is branching within a branching, they kind of quickly get out of hand. And this is a challenge uh, to remember uh, for any instructional designer. Uh, so um, one thing before we actually move to the practical part, one thing that I just wanted to share with you about the scenario-based learning that not every branching is actually a scenario-based learning. Uh, so there are cases where Mm, but I think that uh, is actually interesting uh, what Benjamin just told, like where whenever you do the wrong move, the scenario ends. Uh, but that is relevant for like uh, that particular training because of the specifics of the topic. But very often when you get started, um, the um, like knee jerk uh, way to do it is that, okay, so I have three options. One is the right one and two are the wrong ones. And if my uh, learner chooses uh, the wrong ones, they immediately get like eh, wrong, go back. And so kind of you lead the learner to the only right way uh, of doing things. And then that's the only way when the story unfolds so um but for scenario based learning also consider that the options um could actually provide exploration of the topic and um so this uh would be very controlling in a controlled environment um but for scenario based learning we want to actually provide the safer space of exploring things um, and um, if you are anything like me, being keen on uh, science-based things, just to uh, talk a little bit about the science behind scenario-based learning, uh, it actually uh, is built on the two pillars of situated learning theory, where, um, and this is also something that Benjamin uh, brought up briefly in his responses, where uh, learning really is well processed by people if it is happening in the uh, context where it's going to be used. And then the situated cognition of where the things you learn are connected to the context um, and not just, you know, kind of singled out. Uh, but again, if uh, to go back to uh, the relevance of scenario-based learning and the choice of it as a tool, uh, here I have a um, short checklist, um, and now we can uh, walk through it, and you can now think of an educational product or a course or a workshop that uh, maybe you are in the process of producing, maybe you are going to produce, and say you're thinking of, huh, 
why don't I use scenario-based learning for it? And let's figure out if that is um, a good idea. Um, so um, just answer yes or no for every question. And then by the end of it, hopefully it will, it will give you more clarity as to whether SBL is a um, recommended tool there. So the first thing to consider is the, are the outcomes based on skills development or problem solving? Um, yes or no. Uh, is it difficult or unsafe to provide real world experience of the skills? Um, well, in the time of the pandemic, right, uh, some countries are still uh, facing the COVID restrictions. So um, that <clears throat> also may be something to consider here. Uh, do learners already have some relevant knowledge to aid decision making? This is about uh, if you have uh, like the learners who are starting from the very basic things, uh, you might be consider using scenario-based learning because to really explore and to make decisions, you do need some knowledge that you already have. Yeah, Jessica, I see a raised hand. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I'm still sorry. I'm still th sticking actually with the first question. Okay. Um, when I ask myself, are the outcomes based on skills development or problem solving? Aren't both of the choices uh, heading to SBL could be an option? So is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. So uh, here we are not choosing between skills development or problem solving. We're choosing between skills development and problem solving, and not. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then that was a little bit misleading. Okay. Uh, now I understand that That's maybe really the way the question is formulated is not super clear, but thank you very much for clarifying. So uh, if it's uh, here, if the training that you have in mind, uh, its outcomes are based on skills development or problem solving, both then would lead SL to would be a good option. Yeah, yeah. Okay. understood. <laughs> thank you. Okay, yeah. Um, then the other thing to consider and uh, when I was just uh, starting to use SBL, that was actually a revelation for me because I nobody told me that I should have considered that, is uh, do you have actually the time and resources to design, develop, and test the SBL? Because that may be kind of resource consuming. And if you understand that this course or this training will become irrelevant in say three or six months, you might not want to invest all that effort into developing such training. And um, and Slata, do you have yeah. like any um, an, a first start of how you can estimate the time and resources? Because as you just said, that's my main problem, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, to decide, do I have the time and resources to start uh, choosing scenario-based learning? Because currently, I don't have much experience uh, with how long does it actually really take. I have the uh, I started with some small scenario-based learnings, and even the small ones are getting so exhaustive in resources um, because as, as soon as you leave these, you have this small branching uh, thing in, in the slide before, uh, where you said this is not a real scenario-based learning, but it, even if you just add one of branching, then it's getting <laughs> really, really complex. And um, yeah, so I, I, I find it re very difficult to estimate how much, to, uh, how long would I really uh, sit on this uh, using scenario-based learning as a tool. Yeah, I can relate to what you're saying. <laughs> Um, cause the first one I was using for, it took me like months to develop. And I don't agree that it was the proper usage of resources, but, uh, well that happened. So, uh, I actually don't know if there is like a formula to rely on to calculate, uh, maybe some of people who also use scenario-based learning could, if you know, please share, <laughs> Um, but, you know, the other thing that I just wanted to highlight here for you is that uh, if that's going to be like one of the first ones, you are not only investing your resources here in the particular training, but you're also investing in your skills development because 
uh, having built one, even if it's going to take a while, the next one is probably going to be easier and it will go faster. So you are investing in uh, actually econom economizing your resources in the future. Uh, but what I would consider here is my department's priorities and how that translates into the business goals. And um, maybe if I have very often, um, I had a leader uh, who had a broader overview of like the business overall, and uh, I would just um, ask for their feedback. So I believe that this is going to take from, say, two weeks to three months to develop. And these are the um, like benefits and these are the risks. So could do you see uh, a preference here so if that's just like hard for me to estimate so this is how I would tackle it probably but maybe somebody else could share their view on this I would for example be curious um, Ben whether you are facing these kind of um, decision making uh, in, in your in your work because I understood that you deal yeah. a lot with scenario based learning so Yes, um, absolutely. Um, uh, just an example to, 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 to emphasize this, I actually facilitate workshops for our scenario-based training tool as well. Um, these are um, about two hours and almost half of this time or about half of this time is not actually spent explaining how to use the tool, how to, what to click, because that's relatively simple. But um, it's about how to design these scenarios effectively. What what's what to keep in mind, and, and that's 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 the hard part, really. Like the, the tools should be as easy as possible because that's that's the easy part. It's really about about building these concepts. And um, I also always recommend to to start simple, um, the simple scenarios, and really um, think about okay, what are upcoming projects where I can use them, and we maybe even have a at least partly formulaic approach at some point with a little, a little bit of a formula on how to develop them, how to build them, where can we get information that we need. For example, we have a, one of our customers is producing a lot of uh, sales training and objective and objectives, objections handling for uh, their medical products. And they realized, okay, we have 30 products, you're going to need a scenario-based learning for all of them, or you want to do a scenario-based learning for all of them. So now we can spend the time to really think about, okay, what do we need? How do we work them effectively? And then build a sort of framework to save some time at least. And one of the most valuable things here, here were actually their subject matter experts, because uh, we actually started with finished um, documents of uh, frequently asked questions and key messages that, that the salespersons had to convey and had to use this as our base for these scenarios. That was fine for simple scenarios, but to build a really effective scenario, you need the reasoning behind these messages. You need to know why is this the message? Why is this important? What are the nuances? What can go wrong there? So we actually started working with their SMEs and the people developing these, these guidelines and uh, have, have actually have them comment, put add comments to these guidelines, telling us, okay, why is this important? And that's a really helpful way of making the production much easier because it helps you build negative responses, wrong responses. It helps you to uh, build feedback as well because you know why this is wrong. You don't just know the correct answer as a developer now, you actually know why it's wrong and that makes it much more efficient as well. That's a little... Oh yeah. yeah. Thank you so much Thank for the insight because I really agree that this is the the most critical part of developing the SPL is really the the concept and the how uh, what what should I include and what are also wrong answers or punching mm -hmm. answers. So this uh, yeah. Yeah, and you don't really have to use it like for the whole uh, product. You can use the elements of scenario-based learning in certain parts and that can make it easier. I actually see two hands raised. Olga, I think you were the first one. I think you're muted. Yeah, uh, I was. <laughs> uh, I wanted to say that uh, I think that the last question also partially answers the the, the this one. So if uh, the um, content will remain relevant for quite a long time, that maybe uh, 
maybe it's worth to um, spend some resources and time but if it's like a short lasting like uh, if it will be relevant for one week you won't spend maybe half a year developing that so this is also to consider mm. yeah thank you elizabeth well yeah i'm uh, uh, assuming then since uh, Amber academy has this um um <laughs> uh, this presentation now that you also have you can facilitate that within your your solution right um and i'm wondering then is it possible maybe to copy uh, and edit scenarios or share with other you know do you have a database of them or something because that would then for instance everybody does sales right so it could be that there are similar cases you could just edit customer names or problems you know um that's what Although, yeah, yeah uh, do I understand right, Elizabeth, that uh, are you asking if we have like a library of predefined scenarios that you can choose from? Yeah, for instance, yeah. Uh -huh. Or if you could share with, with other people also using your solution, if there could be some share. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, we don't have a predefined library, but you can easily build uh, scenarios, dialogues and options and share with other people. So yeah, we will... By the end of the session, uh, we will um, uh, ask uh, people, ask you participants if you want to try it and then send you the access so you can try and uh, build some scenarios and share them. But before that, let's um, come back to Zlata and uh, 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 build some scenarios. Yeah, uh, the demonstrations that we had today, they were actually built uh, on the Work Academy platform. And um, we're quickly moving to the practical part. So um, the question of how to start, um, you know, this um, uh, widespread uh, issue of being faced with a blank page and uh, where to proceed from there. Um, so I just want to share some steps that may be helpful to get started. So the first one is to identify the learning outcomes, which actually not exclusively related to scenario-based learning, but probably is the first step for uh, producing any kind of educational product. Uh, the next one, uh, this is where I invite you to double check whether you need scenario-based learning for the problem that you're trying to solve with this training. And um, then uh, build the storyline. Um, I like using um, Mirror for that, but I know people have used various tools, um, but I prefer not to go to the LMS or any tool that um, say Adobe Captivate or whatever tool I'm using for uh, building the story before I actually construct it. You know, it's like uh, with the presentation, first I build the story and then I only build slides, the same here. Um, and then the thing that actually helps getting started is to identify the triggering event or a situation. So that's basically the where we start. Um, and now is the time where uh, we will actually invite you to uh, go ahead and try to build a, a small scenario, small story. Um, right after I present you this slide, we will again invite you to go to near board. And at the same time, uh, we will ask you, oh, do we have breakout rooms? Yeah, um, I think two or three will be enough. So we will, uh, guys, ask you to split into breakout rooms of uh, two or three people. Um, and in the mirror board, uh, there is this uh, prepared space to try and build a scenario. You can actually, uh, you don't really have to make it complicated. This is just to kind of process everything that we have uh, talked today about. Um, and the four parts of the task is to briefly mention one or two outcomes that you uh, want your learners to result with. Um, what is it that you will be teaching? And in the mirror, you will find the copy of the checklist to see if you really need scenario-based learning for it. Then build the storyline. Here, I invite you to uh, 
try build at least one branching. Uh, doesn't have to be super complicated with, you know, like five options, two or three will be more than enough. And uh, choose the starting point uh, for yourself. And now this is where I will go to mirror to show you where this all is going to happen. Here we actually have a couple of examples for you. The first one is the example of, from the demonstration um, where we talked about ill-defined and well-defined problems. And here you learners were the characters of this uh, scenario, but you actually can choose to uh, create other characters that are not your learners. So like here I have an example of um, from the uh, feedback training. Uh, here is the triggering event. Uh, one of your teammates has re repeatedly been rude to other teammates over the past two weeks. In addition, he has missed a couple of team meetings without informing beforehand. What are you going to do about it? And then you have three options too early to do something I will keep observing for a couple of weeks and then it takes you to other parts to explore this decision I will talk to our team leader about this and then again several uh, stages of exploring this option and I'm great at communicating I'll talk to him myself and then all of these uh, branches they come to uh, the resolution where turns out John's close relative has been very sick and he's not taking it too well. So um, here, guys, are the spaces uh, for you. Uh, this is the checklist uh, where you can see whether you need an SBL. Here, please mention the learning outcome that you're going to uh, try to achieve. Um, and this is basically the template to use. Mm -hmm. uh, should I? Yeah, just a sec. We'll give you, say, uh, 10 minutes to do this. Um, and in 10 minutes, we'll uh, wait, you, uh, wait for you in this um, uh, main room. Um, if you have any questions, please ask me now. Uh, if anything's not clear, I would like uh, to clarify that. Okay, so then Olga, will you? Um, yes, I, I will. Yeah, it's uh, my first time in my life when I will create breakout rooms. So if <laughs> something goes wrong, don't mind. But uh, I think everything is clear. It will be two breakout rooms. So one room will have three people, another one will have two. And me and Zlata will run over the rooms and help you out with the um, things. and. Um, the Zoom will assign people automatically, so I don't know who will be where, but I will start now. So I am creating the breakout rooms now. Mm hmm okay and um, so 10 minutes you say and uh, Zlata will then the rest 10 minutes be enough to uh, give feedback uh, on what people okay sure. we're, we're not gonna you know like zoom in a lot on it okay we'll basically have like uh, five minutes for the feedback because we're not going to give it to all of it, all of them we'll just um mm -hmm. ask and then we'll give some feedback and then we'll have some time to uh finish mm -hmm. okay mm. maybe like after two minutes we should uh, jump in some rooms and ask people if they need help yeah, I think we can do it actually now. Uh huh. Okay. So I will go to room two. Mm -hmm. Can you see the rooms actually? Yeah, yeah, I can. I will join the room two and. Um, join the room. Hi, Olga. 
Do you need any help? I think maybe <coughs> a little bit of start help. I think we're a bit like not sure like uh -huh. what would be a what would be a fitting learning outcome. Like that's not too complicated or not too big, you know. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, okay, you see, we provided examples for trigger situation and for options, but we haven't provided actually examples of learning outcomes. Um, I think uh, it's, um, uh, do you already know what for you want to build an example? Uh, in, no? Uh, no. Uh, for example, for um, um, sales uh, training or for customer training or uh, leave, I think you mentioned some examples of application of uh, scenario-based learning in the beginning. Maybe you want to tackle that one. What was that? Uh... Well, uh, I use it a lot when I'm teaching language for adults. Like we, they kind of, they've worked on words and vocabulary and skills, grammatical skills. And then maybe they get like a, like a picture and they have to make a dialogue. Mm -hmm. I have that use in the skills, um, but it's not like on a platform. It's more like dynamic face to face. Uh-huh. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you could translate it. Uh, uh, I think Ma Maria has experience as well with languages and maybe you could translate some of the um, experiences into scenarios. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, we have to start with the learning outcome first. So language oriented, uh, what could it be? So uh, for example- but It could be something so simple as like, introduce yourself in the new language like this you know has not so such a big learning outcome so then what could be the different scenarios like like for uh, me it seems that how are you doing there's right? not like different or like do you mean like a formal and formal or like how would be the, the like different options <laughs> yeah because it i mean it is a right or wrong answer you know if you say hi what's your name and you answer something that's not your name then right um so uh, um, the learning outcome would be that uh, after this uh, training a learner would be able to introduce themselves right so maybe you can start by typing that down for the learning outcome mm -hmm. in the mirror uh, and then uh, think of uh, triggering uh, um trigger situation what what could possibly trigger the this so for example uh, um, a possible um, um, situation could be like hey you're walking into a conference room and uh, someone approaches you and tells you hey uh where are you from and then yeah okay yeah, yeah. Maybe something like that. Yeah, right. I think we can do something like, like for example, there are options like, okay, hey, what's up? Or like, uh, good afternoon. Um, for example. You, like, I don't know. You know, so, and then, for example, if the person chooses, um, hey, what's up? You kind of write like, okay, that's a nice uh, way to greet a friend, but maybe in a conference it would not be so appropriate. So maybe mm -hmm. uh, you can try again something like this. Yeah. Okay, I think here I can leave you. <laughs> Thank you. Ты музычку слушаешь? You're muted. Can you hear the music or is it? A... Yeah, I can hear it now, but uh, when you're muted, oh, I... When it's muted, oh yeah. I saw you kind of dancing, so I think, hmm. <laughs> what is music in Olga's head or in just the room playing? <laughs> 
Yeah, I have this uh, nice playlist from D school. Do you know this D school? It's um, uh, from Stanford uh, uh, Design School. They are like uh, school for creativity and whatever. And they develop this uh, playlist that helps people to like uh, enter the um, creative work um, mode. And uh, I really like it. Cool. Sounds great. Мне так нравится твоя вышиванка. Это мы когда выезжали из Яремча, из нашего изгнания военного, там рыночек такой, волк рыночек. Я такая, все, я должна купить. Ну, это платье? Нет, это рубашка. А, класс. Очень-очень mm -hmm. классно. Я, конечно, там выбирала их кучу, но я поняла, что как бы война, нельзя купить пять вышиванок. <laughs> Пришлось остановиться на одной. Так, еще две минуты, да, я буду выгонять. Да, 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 через минуту можно закрывать. Там, когда закрываешь, остается типа таймер в, в минуту, по-моему. Mm -hmm. Через минутку можно закрывать. Слушай, ну, оказалось, довольно-таки легко создавать эти комнаты. Это mm -hmm. Да, такое. Там еще есть, можно переназывать эти комнаты, заранее сделать и потом просто сказать всем, идите. Прикольно. Я закрываю уже 19 минут. Угу. Так. Как раз будет минутка закончить. Угу. Сто тридцать евро мы собирали. Класс. Угу. Круто. Мы зря старались. Да. И ты сейчас прокомментируешь дату, что они поделали? Да, да, да. Сейчас попросим их презентовать быстренько. Может, да, это самое что-то прокомментирую. Предложим им написать тебе, если они хотят построить это на Workademy и будем заканчивать. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hello, guys. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. I hope you yes, had... So the breakout rooms worked. Congratulations <laughs> for doing it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope, I hope you had a productive uh, session uh, in the breakout room. So here we have... Uh, we still have a bit of time. So I was wondering... Um, does any uh, of the teams want to actually present uh, their uh, results of their teamwork? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, we can quickly present, but we don't have uh, two branches. We just uh, <laughs> succeeded to do one because first we had to decide on a topic. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, maybe you could zoom in a little bit on team one. And, um, sure. I'd be happy to say some words to it. We, we took one example from um, the current work of Benjamin, who is dealing with customer support trainings. And the uh, trigger was so the learning, I'll start with the learning outcome. Um, the outcome should be that the customer support employee. Uh, should learn how to politely reject system access that um, the, the customer is asking for. Um, 
but the superior of the customer is sick, uh, so he says, and um, the support employee couldn't give the access without the confirmation. So he, in the end, he has to reject that. Um, but how is the question? How does he reject this? So the trigger situation would be the customer calls the support for system access they have no clearance to and the superior needs to confirm but is unavailable. Um, and we decided to build uh, three different options. One would be the worst case um, option in blue, decline without further explanations. And then uh, second uh, step, we define the best case answer, which would be decline, uh, explain empath empathetically, and also try to find a workaround together so that mm -hmm. he really gets some help. And then we decided to also add a middle option uh, where it goes into the right direction, so declining, um, but explaining empathetically, but without the second step to find a workaround. So, and that's mm -hmm. where we had to stop <laughs> for this time. Um, Although you could actually even consider these options um, combinations of paths. So it wouldn't just be one step you decline and don't explain anything, for example. So this could also already be multiple steps. You ask what the problem is and you gather some information. Maybe you ask a question that isn't relevant and then you just decline without explanation. But these can actually be paths, not just single decisions as well. But of course, we didn't have the time for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that actually captured my attention where I was reading these options that you're proposing to a learner, and I'm like, okay, decline, explain empathically. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a good option, but then I saw that there was another one, and I'm like, okay, I'm curious, what is the what else is there to choose from? So, yeah, and um, how do you see if you if you had a time to discuss that? How do you see those options going further or further branching, or is there feedback that is giving to a learner? Well, we we didn't discuss this further in the group, but maybe I can give a few examples because this is something we've been working on uh, here and there for our internal support team, and. Um, like you said, there are further uh, steps down the line, for example, um, and even in our best option, we have to try asking further questions. Um, what I just said, you can also ask long questions. You can basically end up with some kind of small talk, which might be an empathetic approach, and they might not be that angry anymore, but it's still not the optimal way, because you, maybe you could have actually had the chance to ask something that allows you to solve this customer's problem without giving them system access. So this, these were the, the or these are the, the branches that this can go toward. It was actually ended up or is still in, in progress about the complex scenario where these paths keep intertwining and you really have to pick and choose the correct questions to ask and, and things to do. And also, of course, a lot of feedback as well. We actually have two versions of this scenario, one without feedback and one with feedback for, for practice, where they where it actually gives you some information on what kind of questions to ask. Uh, be, be careful, don't go too, too far into um, small talk or don't ask too specific things. Don't uh, assume anything, just ask open questions first and then go more into detail. All these kinds of things. I mean, you can make it really complicated, um, but also a little more simple, but um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And just one thing that came to mind that I wanted to highlight, uh, I was also working on uh, customer uh, in customer support uh, training. And so depending on the um, C-level um, manager that was running the customer support, actually very different uh, answers that you have here would be considered uh, oh, yeah optimal for it. So say, um, like from my psychological and training background, I, I'm definitely voting for explaining empathically and trying to find a workable solution, but I can definitely see that the actually preferable approach would be like just to decline and um, close the ticket as done and that's it. Yeah. So that is just again to uh, to address the well well defined ill defined situations yeah and i guess it also it's, uh, it's de uh, dependent also on how busy is it you know how much time do you have to to uh, to go in detail with the with the customer support if you have a queue of people you might not go 
want to go so much into detail. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We actually had a, a similar scenario-based learning for uh, one of our customers, which was for the first level support. And one of some of the scenarios, the, the correct way to go was get the information and then escalate to the next level because you didn't have the clearance to go for any further. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, sharing and for presenting your scenario. So uh, like Olga uh, said a bit earlier as a little teaser, actually, if you want to go ahead and try to build these scenarios that you have drafted um, within Work Academy platform, um, Olga, what is it that you want us to do to get access to <laughs> Uh, just um, uh, please, uh, we have a chat here, put a plus, and uh, for those people who put a plus, I will send you access to Work Academy platform and uh, uh, with a little explanation how to actually create uh, scenarios using it. Okay. Yeah. yeah thank and if you want a bit more on scenario-based learning to continue learning about this, uh, here are some resources, uh, just a couple to get started. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be sharing this presentation, but these are actually, um, there are links uh, attached to it, so you can follow mm -hmm. it. And um, if, you, if you had a good time today, um, feel free to uh, connect and uh, let's collaborate maybe on other projects. Um, I, from my personal experience, the best stories and best projects happen uh, because of networking. And uh, I would really like for us to build connections and to become a network. So um, there is this QR uh, that leads to my LinkedIn. So, uh, or Facebook is also an option. And, um, I do a lot of consulting and workshops and lectures in various topics. Uh, so if ever you think of a project that we could uh, work together on, drop me a line and be happy to do it. Uh, or just any other fun activities, which is uh, also great. And uh, yeah, this is me. Uh, I want just to quickly also, Zlata, uh, share a link to your LinkedIn so people can uh, follow you right uh, ahead. And uh, yeah, as I already mentioned, we build a learning management system for growing companies. We have now an evergreen campaign that uh, from every subscription, we donate uh, half of it to help uh, different Ukrainian initiatives that help saving lives. Uh, so if you are looking for an LMS, uh, not only you can become a happy user, but also help a little bit to, in this uh, fight and bring us closer to the victory. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, so guys, uh, thank you so much for this time together. If you want to share uh, some thoughts, comments, feedback, smiles, whatever, you're very, very welcome to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will send a follow-up email with the, where I will share the presentation, uh, the platform, the course that we've been using and uh, showing you so you will be able to explore more and of course connect uh, and uh, let's keep in touch and uh, keep with this networking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for hosting this event. Thank you. And Thank you. Yeah. And uh, you feel free to to leave if you want. <laughs> you don't have to leave, but you can stay here either. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, guys, for this uh, hour and a half. I really had a good time and appreciate you joining in the middle of the day and uh, for this opportunity to connect with you and to talk about the things that uh, we're passionate about. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Have a good day. Все? Ну что? Да, все. да, все ушли. Ну как тебе понравилось? Мы это сделали, я тебе посмотрела. Это был мой вопрос. <laughs>
Боже, мне очень понравилось, это, это было прекрасно, и они все так полюбили, вообще просто. Класс, я очень рада, что тебе понравилось, я переживала, чтобы ну, тебе зашло и вообще всем зашло, понятное дело, что ты все время переживаешь. Мне очень понравилась группа, мне кажется, да. мне кажется, это была одна из самых классных групп, которые вообще были за все это время, ну, я не на всех, конечно, моментах была, но вот эти ребята мне прям запомнились, и они такие прям да. спрашивают, прям спрашивают, и очень у них такой как бы, 